Hey everybody, today we are here taking an exclusive look at Flux Core. What the Flux is Flux Core? Flux Core is the Flux Project's dashboard or application or central single pane of glass for their proof of useful work service. I got early access to the dashboard, to the tool. Finally got it cleared with the team that I'm able to show the alpha of this product. This is very, very alpha, not even beta, very much first looks. So this is the very first look of Flux Core. All right, let's just dive into this. As of right now, Flux Core can only be installed on Linux, Ubuntu specifically, on bare metal. So I tried to run this on virtualization, it wouldn't let me. So I've got a couple of servers and a couple of desktops spun up here, just with stuff I have around the house. Most of my stuff is packed away right now because we're moving. I broke into some of the boxes and pulled some stuff out just so that I could play with this more. Specifically, you know, Flux is saying that you can do this with your hardware you have now. You got a gaming machine, you've got a mining machine, you know, you've got a server. There's going to be different types of useful work that will utilize all of these different pieces of hardware. This here is uh, an application called No Machines, and it's essentially a VNC or a remote desktop viewer for Linux that works really, really well. You just you just install it and it fucking works, and I love it. So we're gonna start off with this guy. I named it POUW, and it is a Optiplex 3070 micro desktop. And I can't get into it. Why can't, why isn't it letting me in? Son of a bitch. I was just saying how much this thing works, how well it is. I wonder if these other machines like fell asleep or something. Anyway, so I guess we're gonna look at one of the desktops I just stood up last night. This is the Flux Core dashboard. And eventually we'll be able to see all of our different rigs, as well as ASICs and Flux nodes, all within this single dashboard, single pane of glass. So we'll have a big list of all of the different machines here. Let's, let's start with what we see. We see our machine. It's, uh, here's the operating system, the Ubuntu machine. On this one, I've got a single RTX 3080 installed. Since we'll have a big list here, we'll be able to sort by the different GPU models. And right now, a lot of these buttons don't work, you know, to be honest. You know, sees different ways that we could get paid uh, for useful work and for mining, the different services that are available. So we have mining, we have rendering, AI, and gaming currently. And we can see that all those are enabled in this little icon area over here to the right. But again, this is super alpha, still in development. In fact, you know, this has changed multiple times just since I've been playing with it. But we can see that we've got immediate access to like quick buttons, I guess, for each of the rigs. We'll have, you know, we can run benchmarks from here, rescan our hardware, and we'll also be able to update the client all from the primary dashboard. Now, if we drill into the machine, we'll see this overview screen, which I'm sure we've all seen a couple of times. This is kind of what the splash screen was, or they were showing at Mining Disrupt. Dedicated information on what's going on at that point in time, and then all the system information that drills down here so we can see what kind of motherboard we have, our CPU that we have in here. And yes, this is actually one of the mining motherboards that I had laying around that I repurposed. I didn't have it packed away in a box yet. So I grabbed it and I put it on there. It's a fourth gen i5. I've got just a plain old Kingston SATA SSD on this. And, uh, and again, this one has the RTX 3080 in it. Under benchmarks, this is where me and my spreadsheets come in. We'll be able to just hit start benchmark and we can benchmark all the things or just some of the things. There's a lot of these benchmarks out here that aren't implemented yet. So as of right now, we've just got um, our AI score for AR benchmarks, um, our GL Mark II benchmarks, and then of course our bandwidth benchmarks and our read write for our drives, all of which are gonna be important and be needed for the useful work service. We'll have 3D UNED, Cosmo, uh, DeepCam, RNNT, RetinaNet, AI3KS, a lot more benchmarks will help us narrow down what jobs our machines are built for. And this is just gonna evolve, guys. But moving on, so our RTX 3080, this is a 10 gig version, Founders Edition. We score right here at 33,146. I don't know what that means. Nobody knows what that means. Right now, it's just a number. That doesn't translate to anything of value. We don't know what that's going to produce as far as income, what jobs that's good for yet. Uh, it shows the median here is 21,000. The absolute best 
out of all of the cards and rigs that have been tested so far, which is a very small limited number, 43,000 is the highest, and we scored 33,000. So pretty darn good, I'd say. I do know Jeffkey said a single RTX 3070 scored him about 27,000. Kind of keeping that in mind. Um, and that's our AI overall AI score. So there's an if inference score. Again, I'm not sure what any of these mean yet. These are just the benchmarks and the, the numbers that we're coming up with at the moment. AI training score, which if you add the AI training score and the inf inference number together, you get a total AI score. Um, our GL benchmark score, and then the download speed, the upload speed, the latency, and the disk read write speeds. Then we can come over here to hardware and it gives you a more dedicated rundown of the physical equipment that you have on your machine or your rig here. Like for example, this one, like I said, the i5-4460, your storage, and I can't scroll down on this one. Yeah, this bench was, and this is the no machine that's given me issues. If I go out and physically touch that machine and log into it, I'm able to use it a lot easier. But if I were able to, oh, here we go, nice. So we can see we've got a little bit of information about our storage. Our operating system we have installed, which in the future it will be on Windows. I don't know if they're gonna have it for Mac. I don't know if it would be beneficial to have it for Mac or not. Our motherboard information, the memory that's in use, and our network. So that's a rundown of the main pieces that we see here. Now this menu off to the side. Oh yeah, by the way, sorry for your eye blinding you there, but they have a light mode. Of course, I prefer the dark mode. We've got a bunch of different options over here in our in our menu in our slicer card. So under mining, we can see this is a pre-populated wallet. As of right now, I'm unable to change this. So in the future, you will be able to, of course. But this is where you can control all of your mining from a single dashboard. And you can see we've got our RTX 3080. So we would just select it and um, whoops, select it again under actions we can go in and change our configurations right from the dashboard. So our overclocks and our power limits, all of the things will be here, kind of like it's set up into Hive OS. Not as granular yet, but again, guys, just bear with me here. This is alpha. Right here, we've got our dropdown for our different mineable coins that we're able to click. Right now, it just has flux. Our different miners will be able to drop down here. I'm wondering if we'll be able to install the miner ourselves, or if that's going to be populated from uh, the flux team. We've got our different mining pools here. Something that Dan told me is if you choose to, you'll be able to have auto switching on mining pools so that not everybody is going to that same pool, you know, help spread the hash rate around. Look at this. We've got a selector over here that if we want, and right now we, we can't click it right now. <laughs> uh, I'm clicking this and it's not doing anything. But we'll have a checkbox here that if we've got five cards in this rig and only two of them we want to do proof of useful work, we can do that. Well, the other ones are just dedicated to mining. Yeah, under, under the miners screen here, we'll have our different rigs. Again, this is gonna be in a primary dashboard. We see this option where I can add a new worker. It's not implemented yet, so this button doesn't do anything. When you're in the process of installing this, You've got a machine code, like a machine ID and a password. So far it's being pre-populated. This will be used when we're adding new machines to your GUI. Uh, and then here we've got settings. Again, there's not much going on right now. We'll have a little bit deeper dive into the dashboard from here. We'll be able to see our flux nodes or different services available and then settings and your wallet information. Another piece, look at this, estimated profitability. Based on the hardware you have installed on each of your machines, quick little calculator is going to give you an estimated profit now i don't know if that's just on the mining side or if that's also going to be on useful work side i think useful work is going to be at least on day one not necessarily far and few between few and far between whatever that fucking saying is not as prevalent or not as consistent as mining is right it's just getting off the ground people have to start using the service in order for you to get paid for it. Let's see, so this was my i5 machine with a single 3080. Let's look at my other test bench. So this one has a 3080 and a 3070 Ti. Same thing here, so we can click, yeah, we can't click those. But you can see here as an example, the proof of useful work, we could be able to unclick it. If I want one of these machines to be able to do, to do useful work and the other one not, we've got our benchmark score. Now, this is interesting to see because, um, again, this is just using hardware I have laying around the house that 
isn't so packed away I can't fucking get to it. Look at the hardware I have installed here. An i3-7100. An i3. It's a great CPU for mining, but for something like this, it's just not going to fly. It's sitting at idle, it's 50% used. On, on Linux, what I was getting at here is benchmarks. I can, I can hit start benchmark and it will never benchmark. It'll sit there, it'll take about five minutes, it'll go through and do its thing. We can see benchmark running down here in the corner, but it's so fucking slow. The processor on this is so basic, so slow, I can't get a benchmark score out of it. And this is cool, check this out. So we'll have a useful work leaderboard. Now I don't know if it's you can opt into that or opt out of it, or if you can put a designation, like if I wanna put geek of all trades and my AI score or my GL bench score. Yeah, see, it's just gonna sit there and not do anything. Yeah, nothing, it's not gonna, it's not gonna complete. But this, this, look at that, i3-71, it's 93% used. 94, it's just pegging that motherfucker. It never does anything, so. So that kind of sucks. What also sucks is that there are these other machines I can't get into. Uh, let me go do a reboot on the on these machines and see if we can get into them. So I'll be right back. Two hours later. All right, well, we'll start with this one. So this here is a PowerEdge R730. These are one of my servers that I actually pulled out of the data center a couple of years back. Uh, so they're a little bit older. We've got dual Xeon 28 core pro prox. It looks like it's only registering one though showing a single Xeon CPU. And that's interesting to see. But we've got 28 cores, 56 threads, um, 256 gigs of RAM. This one's interesting. So each of these hosts originally came with an NVIDIA Grid K1 card pre-installed. And what that was used for is virtual desktops. When we were able to slice off some of that GPU and G do a GPU pass-through within Citrix server application, for some virtual machines that needed that graphic rendering power or graphic utilization more than just a VGA visual plug, um, something that had some horsepower behind it, we were able to assign it to that machine. So each of these single cards actually registers as four GPUs. So we can see here that we've got our K1 card right here. One, two, three, four. This is actually one card, one GPU that's installed on, on the PCI bus. I would be interested to see if it would let me turn those off, those different dies or different cores for proof of useful work or just keep some on mining. Now these are really old cards, they're not going to mine. They're actually Kepler generation, so they're old as fuck. And you can see here our AI benchmark sc score is 1,910. 1910. So we got 33,000 over here with a single 3080 and with our server grade older server grade GPU over here, we got 1900. Uh, so that's the R730 with a single grid card in it. Let's see if this other one popped up yet. No, hmm. what about this guy? So this is another one of my uh, servers, but I pulled out the grid card and I installed two NVIDIA A2000s in it. The six gig version, not the 12 gig version. We can see them here. Yep, there's one, there's the other. And our benchmark score was 1806. 1806. It's disappointing. I'm wondering if it's the GPUs that are causing this, uh, this low score or if it's a combination of CPU and GPU, because the CPUs are great, the Xeons that I have in here are fantastic for a multi-tenant environment. But for, for anything GPU intensive, of course, even with some A2000s in there, I ain't doing shit. I'm wondering if the CPU is going to be optimized for number crunching like that, for AI training or machine learning or any of these other things. In addition to that, this is running on Ubuntu 20, not Ubuntu 22. So there's lots of variables that we have to take into account here. You know me and my spreadsheets. I've already started a spreadsheet here and I apologize for blinding you. Holy shit, that's bright. So I've got Ubuntu 22 on all of these other ones. This one, I was having, again, I was having issues installing the underlying OS on bare metal. Maybe the hypervisor is a little more forgiving. So far, I've got this installed on five machines. This is the bench that we couldn't get to benchmark. This is our bench machine that has a single 3080 in it. Uh, we've got our score of 33,146. 299 for our GL Mark II bench. That's an, that's an interesting number to see. 
Um, we've got our servers here. One of these servers I couldn't, I'm still having issues, still working on it. We've got our machine with two A2000s, our machine with a single grid K1. And then this is interesting to see. So this is an Optiplex 3070 Micro. It's one of those little toaster boxes. It's like, you know, this big that is just super tiny and great for remote workstations, thin clients or whatever. It's got an i5 in it, ninth gen i5, 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM. Maybe it'll pop up now. Let's try it one more time. We'll try it one more time. Now it fucking works, what the hell? All right, so this is the fifth machine here. We've got a benchmark score, 1352. So we're way down here, here's the median. Here's about where I was with the test bench with the single 3080 on it. Our AI score of 1352, but our GL Mark II score is higher than any of these other ones. That's, that's interesting to see, I don't know what that's based on. I don't know if that's GPU or CPU, it might be CPU and then all of our speeds, our latency here, and that's my fantastic fucking internet. And this is kind of what I've got going on at the moment. Really my point here was to give you a first look on what the flux is going on when it comes to useful work and the dashboard that they've developed so far. I'm, I'm fairly impressed with as far as they've gotten on this, it looks great. It, it looks like it's going to have a lot of bells and whistles. It is in alpha, like I've said multiple times now. So don't take any of this as, you know, a, a formal review or a formal final product because it's not. What are your thoughts about this? What are your initial thoughts about seeing FluxCore, the Flux Proof of Useful Work dashboard, actually live and, and in person and in action? I'm playing with it. It's here. You know, I'm excited to see where they take it from here. If you made it this far in the video and you learned something today, hit that thumbs up button. It really helps the channel and I appreciate it. We're on our path to 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2023. So please help me get there. Analytics show it's going to be a close one. And of course, thanks for watching.